This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back whoop, whoop. to another episode of No Other Pod. I'm Jimmy G, along with my good buddy Daniel Kuzer. What's going on, my friend? How you doing, dude? Going good, man. Things are good. It's you went away for the weekend. We had some pretty decent weather. You came home. Mm-hmm. It's kind of chilly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, knock that off. Weather's not as bad here as it's been in Houston. We're recording yeah. uh, Sunday afternoon and thought the current would be long over by the time we recorded this, and not the case. Not the case. So, uh, you guys, they start up in about 10 minutes. We're going to get through this game in about 10 minutes. No, we're going uh, this is, this is going to be a heart. This is going to hurt. You were, you were at this game, man. You were in attendance, so I'm excited to get. My wife told me that our best shows are when one of us was at the game and one was yeah. not. Okay. And that's that's interesting to me because it is an interesting dynamic, right? It is, yeah, where we get two different perspectives. Let me tell you, um, you know, it's kind of like an unofficial goal of mine to get to all the different MLS stadiums around the league. Like, I'm not, like, actively working to make it happen, but if I'm in an MLS city, I look, see what game's going on. If there's a game, I can make work. I try to go. I buy yeah. a scarf from that stadium. This one hurt me. Buying a scarf from Real Salt Lake. Did not like it. Also, didn't realize till I got to the register, and they're like, "That'll be forty eight seventy five. And I was like, "How much is this damn scarf?" Didn't realize it was forty four dollars scarf. And inflation. You, it is not good quality. So it's not a it's not a roughneck scarf. No, it was. And their scarves, their scarf selection sucked. I walked yeah. into their team store, very small team store, and uh, I'm looking at the scarves, and the only scarves they had were all like player specific scarves, which I don't I'm not a big fan of player specific scarves. And I was like, I don't want a Chicho Arango or a Diego Luna scarf. I just want like a generic RSL scarf because I do this thing where every stadium I go to, I I buy a scarf. It's just kind of a thing I started. And so I had to buy, you know, there's there's the the nice like knit scarves that you can get. And then there's like the weird ones that are like print like screen printed on that you can tell are, are lower quality, but they can get them out faster. That was the only one that just had like the generic RSL crest on it. But the other half of it said Utah Jazz Basketball because the same guy owns both teams. And I was like, well, at least this will be a chief scarf because this is clearly just like, you know, a a, a promotional scarf. No. So right. Fifty dollars. Gee many Christmas, dude. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand that. Um but you gotta do it, man. I mean, you and me both, we're in the same club with that. And I was realizing this is like the first year. I don't really have any plans to go to a new stadium. Yeah. Obviously, looking at that St. Louis game uh, later on, but I'm like, man, probably ought to plan a trip somewhere else. But yeah. I got a Cancun trip on the books. That's a whole yeah. thing, bro. Okay, you know <laughs> so what you are you gonna go. do? Yeah, that makes it tough. But uh, yeah, no, I got some. I got some takes about the stadium. I got some takes about the people. I certainly have some takes about the surrounding area because, oh man, no it's good. not good. Maybe we'll have some takes about the game. I don't know. I'll admit, we'll say game did happen. There was a game. I did. Uh, uh, I did run into uh, some of you all may know him, former Kansas City Star reporter Sean Goodwin, who now lives in uh, Boise, Idaho. He was there with his girlfriend, so I met up with him. So I talked for a little bit. Talked sporting Kansas City, so it was kind of fun. Shout out to Sean Goodwin. Appreciate that's you. awesome. I saw that Sean shared it. Sean shared, and I was uh, I was very excited. I was like, Sean. Yeah. I miss you. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't seen him. It's a, apparently a five hour drive from Boise to Salt Lake, which I did not know. But he uh, he made the trip did down. Did you drove expect down him to be there? Uh, I had tweeted out the day before, and I was like, "Hey, people in Salt Lake, what is there to do around the stadium? I'm going to be there. Let me know." And uh, he was like, "Oh, you're you're in town. I'm going to be in town too. Let's get let's meet up. Let's get a drink." Turns out there's no place to get a drink around the stadium, so we just were in the stadium drinking overpriced beer together. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Uh, dude, before we get started, I think we got to mention we did get a new review. We did. Um, our, our, our good best friend, j Dog, and a bunch of numbers. Like this person w- mm-hmm. was must have tried a couple numbers and was like, I'm not going to get the j Dog username, so I got to use no. 1,700 numbers here. They put their whole like crypto wallet number on there. I mean, it is a <laughs> lot of letters with a lot of numbers. Uh, listen, though, j Dog, thank you. Uh Thank you, guy. Uh, it says, funny and insightful. Five stars. Love the pod. I love the banter. Excellent discussions. Fun hosts. I look forward to the podcast every week. Uh, thank you so much. That feels nice. Yeah. Appreciate you. If y'all haven't left a five-star rating and review, we 
We appreciate it. It helps us get found by more people. So go ahead, go do that. We'll uh, we'll get on there and we'll read it for you. So we appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely, dude. I do. Uh, I want to say something here. You okay. you were at you were at this game, mm-hmm. and and you. I got to tell you, I was I I kept seeing you because you stuck out like a sore thumb behind the goal, and yeah. I was like I was like, oh, there's Jimmy. Oh, there's Jimmy again. And uh, then like there was a, a long shot, and my my ass had to hit pause. I'm like, I'm pausing this, and I hate pausing live games. I'm like, when will I ever catch up? How many yep. seconds will it be behind? Yep. So I pause, I get on my my brilliant iPhone, and I zoom in. And if everyone's watching here on the uh, on the YouTube podcast, this is what I saw. It was <laughs> Jimmy. It looks like he's having the worst time. <laughs> yeah, well, it's so good. It's I was so mad good, because. There, well, first off, I don't think there were any other sporting fans in the section around me. I was no. opposite the the supporter section behind a goal. And oh, it's, it's a long story of how I ended up with this ticket. I was gifted yeah. this ticket. I did not buy this happen. ticket. Okay. So oh, I, I was... It. it was at your work conference. I am. I, I was in Salt Lake for a work conference, a software vendor that, that we use at work. I was there. They put on this conference every year. I've been before. It's a good conference. But they have this thing at the conference where... Uh, they call it the dream team where you can like put in requests and they'll like, they'll try to grant them for you. And most people are like, Oh, I'm a little cold in this conference room. Can you like get me a sweatshirt or, Oh, I'm, I'm a little tired. Can you get me, you know, a latte or whatever? And, and the, the, the vendor, they're all about customer experience. So that's kind of what, what they're trying to do. So I'm like, Hey, worst they say is no, I'm going to shoot my shot. And I was, cause I also know that the, one of the owners of RSLs, one of the owners of this company. So I'm like, ah, maybe he's got a hookup. So I put in a dream team request. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm from Kansas City. It's a bucket list dream of mine to visit all of the soccer stadiums in the country. I'm like kind of hyping it up. Uh, and, it. and and my team is here this weekend. I've never seen a game uh, in Salt Lake. I'd love to be able to go and experience the stadium and the, stadium and the environment. Okay. So, you know, if, if you could just give me a single ticket to the game, like that would be so cool. And sure enough, like two hours later, I get an email from SeatGeek and it's like, oh, so-and-so is sending you a ticket. And they got you like third row in like behind the goal. Yeah, they bought me like pretty crazy seats or seats. Pretty cool. So. Did any? Did you hear about anything else that was put in the dream team? Like that they got that was cool. Uh, well, I I know the, on the second day of the conference they said that uh, they had fulfilled like twelve hundred requests, and most of them are like granola like bars or coffee. coffee or whatnot. Yeah, um, thirty one people asked for a Porsche car. None of those thirty one people got that. They're like, no, not doing that. Um, but like one of the speakers was Dwayne Wade. Like he was like a keynote there and like someone asked, can I meet Dwayne Wade? And they're like, they hooked that up. So something, I, you know, you could be like, can I meet Dwayne Wade's wife? (laughs) (laughs) She was, she was not there. Um, so apparently asking for a, a brand new Porsche too much, asking for a $40 ticket to a soccer game, not too much. So, dude, this sounds, it sounds like you were at some like cult retreat or something like it's just, but it was a work event. Uh, glad to know Johnson County residents, uh, city of Olathe is paying for you to get uh soccer tickets. We, we got, <laughs> no, they didn't pay for anything. We get a, yeah. we get super cheap registration as a government. And then this company, they charge, uh, I mean, they get people like Delta and American express as clients. So they're paying also. So, so this money. wasn't like a city of Olathe thing or anything like that. Oh no, no, no. This was like uh the 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 software vendor. This is like their it's like when Apple does their worldwide developer conference, this is like that for this um, that we use. So So you weren't there, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Just no, kind of a no. special thing. Like you weren't required to be there, but you could go, right? We could go, yeah. It was like training for how to use and most of it's just training how to use the software. So it was good. Sounds yeah. cool, man. I want a dream team. I want to shoot my shot for stuff. Yeah, yeah. Listen, there's a pair of Jordans that uh, are very hard to get. <laughs> I mean, <they're laughs> um, so right. I ended up, I ended up there, and um, I went down to the area where the stadium is a little early because I'm like, I don't know what's down. Like, I, I, okay. I know it's not in Salt Lake proper. It's in Sandy, Utah, which is a little bit south. I rode public transit to get there. It's pretty easy to get there. You know, all well and good. And I'm. I'm looking on the map as I'm on the train to get there, and I'm like, doesn't look like there's, doesn't look like there's much around the stadium. Maybe I should have researched this a little more before I get there. So I get there like three hours before kick. Literally, the only things around there is an old movie theater. 
I'm like, well, I can't see. It's too close to the game. I'm not going to see a movie. A Joe's Crab Shack. A Sizzler, which I did not know was still in business. An Arby's and a Starbucks. Nothing else. This Wonderful. Is Sandy, Utah. There is just nothing. You People make fun of Children's Mercy Park and at the Legends. No, it's that that is like the gold standard compared to Sandy, Utah. So it's uh, amazing. It's not the most fun environment. And then I got into the stadium and uh, the stadium itself is fine. It was Star Wars night. I don't know if they kept showing stuff on TV, but there was st- like people in Star Wars costumes everywhere. They did. What what a ridiculous day that just keeps a very old franchise relevant. Like, it's so crazy that that's yeah. a thing. Yeah. I mean, it's no I, different than, I guess, Miss Congeniality Day, like April 25th or whatever it is. I guess so. Yeah, that's true. I uh, I took a picture with a, a husky Kylo Ren. I was like, Kylo's been in a <laughs> husky Kylo Ren. I, I, I Kylo, saw that. Kylo's been hitting the burgers a little bit or something because he, he didn't look like he was quite in the right shape. But hey, oh, credit, my Lord. Credit to him. Love it. Showing up to a soccer game. That's good. Um, and yeah, so I sat among the people. And uh, let me tell you, uh, Salt Lake fans do not like Kansas City. And they and we live in their mind a lot more than they are ever in Kansas City fans' minds. What'd they say to you, like, specifically? Just, it wasn't to me, but they were just being, like, extra loud about Kansas City around me. I don't, I don't go shit talk to people when I'm there. Yeah. I just mind my own business. And I'm, like, I'm not trying to to fight anybody or whatnot so i didn't say right that's why i look so grumpy in that photo because like i'm not saying a damn thing to anybody and i got these two kids behind me who every single time any foul was called on kansas city or like in favor of kansas city they're just screaming it's all ball what are you looking at i'm like that's not okay that's not how it works (laughs) it's great we could hear it on the broadcast by the way and, and me and my wife were like these people are idiots (laughs) <laughs> I literally heard their dad be, let's just because Kansas City always gets all the calls from the refs. It's just how it's. I'm going. sorry. Yeah. You guys are so weird. Like they're weird. It makes no sense to be that weird. It was wild. I mean, it was. Uh, they did, I mean, I'm not sitting here saying that the ref was the best ref, but I didn't think he was like particularly bad in any one team's favor. Like he let a lot of things go and. That's just kind of how the game went. So uh, I thought it was pretty good refing, to be honest. I had no problems except that maybe their goal was offsides. You know, that's I mean, that's really and that's not really the center refs fault. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the it's, AR missed it, though. Whatever. Well, well, we can we can get there. And, and, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I hate everything. But it's just like the stadium itself is is fine. The concessions are whatever. I'll never want to go back to that stadium ever again. I'm glad I went once. I don't need to go there ever again. So I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go once. I'm just hate, it is hating. Funny. A lot of people like they. It, I still call it Rio Tinto because mm-hmm. that's what I have known it as sure. for a while. It's now called. It's America, not called that. It's called America First Field. Yeah, and uh, it, it is funny because there is a, a non negligible number of people in Utah that they're like, we don't wait. We just won't, we're not going to call it that. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> like it's. I mean. People still call it Sporting Park sometimes. They really do. Yeah. Um, and it was like, you know, it was Livestrong Park for a minute before Lance Armstrong broke our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was not great. I mean, I'm from L.A. Originally, I still call it Staples Center. I'm not calling it Crypto.com Arena. It will always be the Staples Center, man. Yeah. So um, anyway, let's uh, why don't we go ahead and let's take our break before we, we get into this game a little bit more. So uh, we'll do that right now. And we'll be right back. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. So, buddy, we've been having uh, storms lately. Have you been doing okay? I, I, you know, I think I'm going to be honest. I think I'm getting a little better. You might not know based on my text messages, uh, especially because I was flying to Salt Lake City last week and there's free Wi-Fi on Delta. So I'm just following along stuff on Twitter and it's like tornado warning in Topeka, observe tornado on the ground. And so I yeah. text you, I'm like, all good in Topeka? And you're like, why wouldn't it be? What are you talking about? I'm like, there's Bro, a tornado. And you're like, I don't know. I'm in a movie. I was at the <laughs> movie theater seeing maybe one of my favorite movies. 
challengers. Oh, see, I've heard Eddie? art was it? I believe so it was going to see it sounds own Tucker Franklin, who was unhappy with the end of this movie, which I'm not, I don't want to spoil it. Don't spoil it for people. Oh, Tucker's not cultured enough for the end of that movie. He doesn't oh. understand. <laughs> Come on, dude. That the, the maker of that movie is a big deal. Okay. Just relax, but do yourself a favor. Go if you if you have no plans to see the movie, buddy. Check out the soundtrack on Spotify. It is wildly entertaining. Okay. I mean, I listened to the soundtrack first, and I was like, I'm gonna dig this movie so hard. Yeah, um, it was great. But I I heard something while I'm in the theaters, and I'm like, is that part of the movie? No, that was kind of like scary. tornado sirens. And then someone's phone like had a like they probably had it on silent, but the mm-hmm. emergency sound overrode the silence. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. Yeah. And I was like, what's happening? I checked my watch. You're like, all good in Topeka. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no one came to get us. How come no one in the movies cares about their patrons and came in and was like, um, you guys can like get your money back or you can leave or stay. Like no one told us anything. This movie's not worth dying for. What a horrible time. What if the roof was just peeled back like a convertible and we were just, you know, dead. Died watching his and die. Unbelievable. Wow, dude. Excellent film. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> so good. Yeah. You have, well, I mean, you've got, you got culture. I know you'd enjoy it. When I was in uh, Tampa uh, a, a little while ago for for another work trip, um, there was a tornado warning when I was at the airport. And literally, I'm I'm watching TV on my phone because I have YouTube TV. So I, I get the warning and I turn on local news and it's like, observe tornado at the Tampa airport. If you're in the airport, take shelter. And Literally nobody moves. No one moved. All of our alarms are going off. And I'm like, should we do something? Like, should we go somewhere? These walls are 60 feet of glass. Like, I'm not trying to die in the Tampa airport. Here's where I'm going to give you some leeway. You're not from here. It's okay for you to be worried. I understand. But people who have been here forever that are just online freaking out. And I'm like, dude, you're not new. You've been here. You know what's going on. Deal with it. You don't got to post on Facebook how scared you are. Come on. Well, I mean, I just, I know logically the chance of a tornado hitting my exact spot is very small. Sure. Uh, I think it's just like, I already deal with anxiety and like the anxiety of knowing all day that like, oh, the area you're in is right in the enhanced risk zone. Then I have like seven hours of being like, Red enhanced risk for a tornado. I don't like that. Whereas an earthquake, I know is actually like potentially much more damaging because you cannot prepare whatsoever. But I just grew up around the concept. It's all of into the earth, so that well, no, you can't. You don't fall. You fucking can't. Not, it's not words. No, you San Andreas is not a documentary. Listen, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how it works. But the concept of earthquakes does not bother me, so I'm fine with earthquakes. Tornadoes, though, I'm just like. Well, we all seem you're, to, you know what happened. You're so kind to to check on people. You you do it in a kind way. I text Chris, our buddy Chris, and I said, "Yo, you dead?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Can I have a little fucking discretion?" Like, what yeah, and what if he was? was? What if he was? I was like, I looked at Marissa and I go, "Can you imagine if I get like a text three days later and they're like, this is his sister and yeah, he did pass?" And I'd be like, "Oh my god!" See if Chris was up on top of it with with a prank he he wouldn't reply to you for a couple of days because it's chris anyway that's and, what he and, does. Uh, and then even then he, he just would have done that you would have been like fuck i haven't heard from him but so, then i'd be like that that's just what he does that's his thing so he's still oh, not committed to the bit but <laughs> no he's just being himself <laughs> anyway let's uh as much as i don't really want to let's let's talk about I'm this game i i mean when I, I, I was there, I, I was uh, at the stadium, I'm talking with Sean, we're having a good time, then the lineups come out, and I look at the lineup, and Sean's in, in line to get a beer, and, and I'm looking at the lineup, and I'm like, what the hell am I looking at? What is and, going on? And and uh, Sean comes over, and I'm like, have you seen the lineup? And he's like, no. And I was like, well, Marino Shanice is playing, and he was like, what? Like, who is that? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard of him. Don't know. Where has uh, he been? This was, it was interesting, because... Rosero, we knew that you know potential injuries the dealing with uh, Voltaire, we knew that there were some potential injuries that, that they were dealing with. Um, Radia got sick before the game, so he's not in in there. Um, I don't think any of us knew that Melia was dealing with something. That's what Peter says. We still don't know what, but it sounds yeah. like the, the planned rotation anyway. 
So I see Pulse Camp in there. I see Volator in there. I see Memo in there. I see Marino Janice in there. And I'm just like, this is not the team to 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 be messing around with because RSL's first place in the world. That seriously, I was like, what are we doing? Are we are we resting people for U.S. Open Cup? Because that's weird. Like no one does that in the history right. of Open Cup. Right. Uh, the, but apparently, uh, this was in Omaha. Apparently, Pulse Camp was told like a, a week or so ago that he would be getting a game soon. Yeah, um, probably just to give Tim some rest on something. We're not being told what that something is, so who the heck knows, man? We'll we'll right. see. So I, I, yeah, I mean, Pulse Camp. Knew he was getting the start. Sounds like from the quotes that he's going to get the start at Omaha as well. So yeah, which we'll I'm see. Okay with dude, Pulse Camp is still Pulse Camp, and he looks pretty great. And he is like the successor when Tim Melia hangs it up. You know, I mean, I'm not going to lie, Pulse Camp. Uh, he was really the only reason that this game was was even zero zero for the longest time. Hell, I was going to do this later. Might as well do it right now. The holiday distillery toast to the match. I got my five farms right there. I got my coffee with some Baileys in here. John Pulse Camp, Holiday Distillery Toast to the Match, my friend. You step Absolutely. in there for a legend of the club, and you against the first place team against a, a, a player like Chicho Arango, who's who's if Lionel Messi didn't exist, would probably be the league MVP. And you kept this team in it, and even the goal that was scored wasn't your fault. So, if we give- won this, if we won this game, I was gonna call up Sporting and see if we could have Pulse Camp on this podcast because he's never been on here. Yeah, that would. Be- and I don't want to. I'm fat. Yeah, well, maybe we'll see if we can get him after uh, after the Omaha win or something. Open scout, absolutely. Pull that off. We'll see. I'm not yeah, don't be counting my chickens before they roost. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they roast. <laughs> um, but I don't know, man. This this game just it felt like there was a, a there was a speed difference for most of the game is what it felt like in person to me. Um, Julio's speed was causing problems for Sporting's back line all night. I love Johnny Russell. I love Daniel Shalloway. You know, I'm a Polito fan, but but you could tell watching this game that our team just does not have the the speed to create things in the attack in the way that other teams do, and and we don't have the positioning right now. And the passing was off all game. We just we just you, you even text me. You're like our passing's been terrible, and I didn't have the the normal line of sight that I did. But from where I could see and, and you seem to confirm it from from watching on television just seemed like we were out of rhythm all game it seemed real bad dude passes just kept getting intercepted I mean Eric Tommy literally had like an interception moment and he like tripped over the ball and down. down he would have been one-on-one with the keeper that probably would have been a Zach, goal. it's Zach McMath so it probably would have been a goal <laughs> those those spit out your coffee that was very funny that was funny <laughs> but it's just it it couldn't happen. It was not meant to be. And I can't, dude, forgive me. I can't remember who posted this online. Maybe you'll remember once I say it. But they said they told a Euro snob friend of theirs to watch MLS. Oh, who was I did it? see this. Was it, it might have been Zach Cobb. I'm maybe not sure. Your, Brisket Bob, maybe. I, it was Brisket Bob. I don't know. Okay. One of them. One of them, yeah. And then he uh, he said, I'm, I'm, I told my Euro snob, Euro snob co-worker that you should watch some MLS this weekend. He said he'd finally give it a chance, you know, after being pestered for so long or whatever. Probably watch Sporting, and they included this clip of Eric falling over the ball. And I was like, God dang it. You know how hard that is? The field monster. Unbelievable, man. Just, just it, We just couldn't get it done. And it upsets me, and it was the number one team, and it was a really close game for a long time. Well, and so what's what's frustrating is, you know, RSL didn't actually create that many chances. If you look at the expected goals for the game, it's 0.89 for our, uh, RSL to 0.35 for Sporting Kansas City. Now, Sporting Kansas City have this bad habit of not getting very many XG over the course of the last handful of games. Uh, but they're also not giving up many expected goals. So, th- I mean, we've talked about this before with this team. That's a good sign in, in, in the sense of they're not giving up too many quality chances. The problem is they are allowing silly goals and making stupid mistakes over and over and over again. Um, and and like I said, if it wasn't for Pulse Camp, you know there were there were some chances um, throughout this game where where he kind of came up big and and had to make some saves. Um, and you know it took all of one minute again for there to be a corner kick. And so I, I'm sitting there thinking, great, a minute into this game, we're going to give up another goal on a set piece. Um, and it almost was. I want to say it was Justin Glad who got a free header 
and he sends it six inches to the right of the net because uh, Pulse Camp wasn't going to be able to get to that one. And I just, I'm sitting there watching set piece after set piece after set piece, and it just seems like every single time the other team is just half a step ahead of Sporting, and and Sporting just can't get there. And ultimately, that was what undid Sporting in the 80th minute was Alenis Vargas just forgot how to defend a set piece. Bro, Justin Glad is like the Matt Beasler of RSL. Like, he's been there forever. He's like mm-hmm. that core. But, man, that header was powerful. It was beautiful. I thought it was going in right in front of you oh, two yeah. minutes into the game. Like It was, man, I, I was, I was going to be so mad. But let me, this is why I was getting mad. I was getting mad from the second minute at the fans around me because that header happens, and then it's a goal kick. John Polskian picks up the ball, and the second he picks up the ball, they start booing. Time wasting. What's he doing? He's wasting time. I'm like, chill out. It's the second minute. He's held the I, ball for literally 2.5 seconds. Like it's I fun. heard that. They kept booing at Pulse Camp. I didn't think he time wasted ever. He didn't. There was like it's one weird. or two times maybe at the end where like Fontas grabbed the ball and he was going to kick it. And then he was like, no, you do it. Which maybe there's a little gamesmanship in there. But also Sporting have done this thing where one of the center backs actually does take the goal kick. So yeah. it could have been that they tried it, didn't like what they saw, and then they got sent up. But sounds like RSL has a weird fan culture out there, bro. Man, it was. I don't. I just. They think they know a lot more about soccer than they do, and I'm not trying to sit here and sure. say that, like, you know, I know everything, or we don't have our fans that are constantly blaming reps or whatnot. But like, this is the first time. I mean, we've been to St. Louis, and St. Louis has has some crazy fans, and it didn't feel like that there. Like this was no, the no. first time I've been around fans where literally every single time they were just screaming at the referee like something terrible happened. I'll tell you, I I when St. Louis comes to town, their fans sit around me and I've never once been like, these fans are dumb. Like I never have that. So no. respect to you, St. Louis fans. Like you should feel good about that. Yeah. Uh but this sounds like RSL fans might be dumb. I just I don't <laughs> they the ones around me did not understand the rules. Um one guy kept, it was kind of funny, he he kept pointing, like, off to the fullback, like, he wanted him to to pass, like, an outlet pass to the fullback, and I'm like, they're not even remotely in a place where they can do that. Like, the, I don't know what you guys think the, they can do, but, like, they're under pressure, sporting's there, he can't just, like, send the ball 40 yards off to a fullback who's not covered. There's a reason he's not covered right now, he doesn't need to be. Man, but a mountain time zone will mess with your head. I, did, I guess. I don't know what's going on. Um... But I mean, first half it was it was relatively uneventful. Pulse Camp made a couple of saves. Sporting's best chance probably came by way of Johnny Russell. Like he he made a little vintage Johnny move and cut inside and um, ended up pulling a shot just wide. Otherwise, uh, you know there there was a chance there. Memo Rodriguez had a chance in the first half that he pulled a little bit wide from distance. But I don't hate Memo Rodriguez. I'm like excited to see him out there. He seems to be. One of the only players that is freaking hustling, bro, that is working and wants that team to win. Yeah. I'm and he really impressed with him. He was playing kind of out of position because he had a last minute fill in for Radia at the defensive midfielder. And he was probably the best midfielder we had on the field yesterday. He was arguably the best field player we had on the field yesterday. Yes. Way out of position, man. But he was all over the field, too. And when I found myself saying that whenever someone like made a good tackle or a decent, I'd be like, oh, good tackle, good pass. Who was that? Memo. Mm-hmm. That's who it was. Yeah. Yeah. He looked good. Um, Marino Johnny, he could never really get it going. He got subbed off at the half. He just, I saw someone say, I, f- I forget who it was. Um, it might have, it might have been Daniel Sperry. Uh, but they basically were like, Johnny looks like he's the exact same player he was when he came here three years ago. And and that's not a compliment per se because he had trouble finding the field three years ago because he wasn't great defensively, and he just yeah yeah he was out of position this game, he just didn't look like he really knew what to do and it's hard when you never play I guess but it just wasn't good. Everyone else Peter saw that too because he took a seat at the halftime. <laughs> and you know what uh, I do want to credit to Peter for for making that decision and and making the change at, at the half because yeah. Peter Vermees does get flack a lot of times from the fan base of he never makes subs, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that and and he 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 made a change that needed to be made at the half and and he looked at his bench and he goes I may not like all the options I have clearly he liked Johnny's more than Felipe Hernandez to start the game but he said this isn't working I made a mistake I got to bring Felipe in 
So credit to him. Um, was it right before the half, I believe, where um, RSL, they earned a corn, or a set piece. I, I almost said a corner kick, but they earned a set piece. And was it Vera for RSL who just lost his damn mind and I thought for a second was about to get a red card because shallowy he's on the ground um and then Vera like I I didn't really see what happened from my seat all of a sudden I was like I think the dude just picked another dude up and I'm I pull up Apple TV on my phone he picks him up like he looks like he's about to body slam him and then Tommy gets in his face and then Tommy's on the ground and it was a picked him up like a sack of potatoes bro I- you should have seen, like, Daniel didn't know who was helping him up. He thought maybe his teammate was helping him up, so he was kind of, like, cool. But the moment he saw that it wasn't his teammate, watch me, dude. He's, he's like this, and then just goes, and just just roared. Like, Daniel, like, was activated. He came to life. Um, and then Tommy kind of got into the scrub there and barely got touched and fell down, and it's like, I you get Tommy what Tommy was fishing for a red card. 100%. Um, it, yellow was good. But, like, you can't just go pick someone up like that. What was the purpose? I mean, well, that's the other thing. Like, I've only seen that in videos, bro. I've never seen that on, like, MLS games, really. Well, what was weird is, like, they had said that there was only a minute of stoppage in the first half. And at this point, it was 45 minutes and 57 seconds. So, like, it's not like Daniel's wasting time. You're not going to get another play out of this. This is going to, Pulse Camp's going to send it, and that's going to be the end of the first half. So it was just a weird thing for for him to to do, um, and I, I yeah ultimately I don't really know what the plan was. Johnny was furious. Fonty was furious. Fonty went and got in his face and was was trying to let him know what was what. Um, Tommy probably deserves a a little bit of an Oscar for what he was trying to do. I think he he was hoping to get some contact with his head. I think because that would have been a red card, but I don't know. I think so too. It, it was just a weird game from the get go. Just a totally yeah. weird tone. I can just I Daniel, I can watch that a million times. That's just so funny. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um But ultimately, you know, what what I learned from from this is that, you know, they they have some quality in the attack. They have some creativity in the attack that that we just unfortunately don't seem to have right now. Um there were two or three chances, you know, throughout the second half where um whether it was Luna or or Julio or Chicho Arango where they're just half a step offside or they they hit one off the post or they, they miss by six inches or Pulse Kemp comes up huge with a kick save where they could have scored another goal or two. Um, oh, yeah. Bro, I, they were coming. It was a matter of time. It, it really did feel like that. I mean, they were they were going down on, on the opposite goal from where I was, but, I mean, for... We were pressing, too. We were pressuring. We were trying. Um you know, Gomez almost got one on the near post that Pulse Camp missed, and it, it bounced off the post in the in the 80th minute, um, or just before the 80th minute. And then ultimately, yeah, it, it came down to that set piece in the 81st minute. And you know, there are some questions about whether it was off or onside. If you look at offside modeling, who we've quoted before, he ended up saying that it looked like it was about seven to seven and a half inches offside. That's a lot of inches. Which, you know, that honestly was a little bit more than I thought when I saw the screenshot. It looked uh, nice to me, dude. Like on TV, I was like, how is that not? What are we doing here? Well, and I know a lot of people, a lot of sporting fans felt the same. I didn't, I obviously couldn't see it on TV. I saw the sure. still screenshot and I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt where I'm like, they're leaning the same way. They're moving. This is hard. Like I get if this isn't clear and obvious, I'd probably clear and obvious. are done if I were a sporting fan, but, um, I'm just really not sure if you're watching the replay what Elenis Vargas is doing. And and it might be a minute before we see Elenis Vargas again because That sucks, dude, cuz I like him. I he's he's fast. I'll, but sure. He he would get into the box with the ball yesterday and then just not have a damn clue what to do with it. And he'd get muscled off the ball and he'd lose it. So, he needs a little That's bit true. more skill there. But he didn't even attempt to run with Chicho Arango on this. Like, it w- there wasn't even a thought of continuing to run. And so Chicho, who, like we said earlier, if Messi didn't exist, is probably the MVP, just gets a free header, and there's not much Pulse Camp can do at that point. So it's just a real bummer. And then, you know, the game ends on what should have been a corner kick for Sporting Kansas City. Honestly, Eric Tommy 
fired a shot. It get, pretty clearly gets deflected. The ref doesn't see it, gives a goal kick, and then just blows the whistle. Yeah. Now, 1-0, and now, you know, hey, they were they were first place in, in the Western Conference. They're still first place in the Western Conference, and Sporting Kansas City are continuing to see that hole get dug a little deeper. And, and you know, now there's a little bit more uh, fixture congestion with the Open Cup coming up. Um, and then they have to to, to host a, a Houston Dynamo team that can give problems at times and, and has Hector Herrera back that they didn't have earlier in the season. So the story not- is we have not gotten better from last year. We were averaging one point a game. Mm-hmm. 11 games, 11 points. I hope we can just put it all on Open Cup, maybe do some damage there, get into the uh, Champions Cup or whatever. But uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty concerned that uh, we just haven't been making any leaps and bounds like other teams have. You have you have Miami dropping another touchdown on somebody. I mean, oh God. God dang, they went down one nil, and I'm like, ooh, poor Miami, one nil, and then they're like, yeah, hold on, and then they oh, win like six two. We have Lionel Messi. He's going to be involved in literally every single goal that we score this game. It's it's insane. I'm, you know, you got to respect it. You know, hat tip, whatever. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, if if things continue to go the way they're going for for Miami, it feels like okay. Well, this is just how it's going to be. Congratulations on your Shield and MLS Cup. I guess the rest of us are just here. And, um, yeah, just enjoy the show. And it, I mean, you know, Messi, Messi had. Five assists, which is a record. Six goal contributions because he also scored a goal. That's a record. So, um, that that kind of sucks. But yeah. it's just it was just a couple weeks ago, really, where we were like, Sporting can still turn this around. There's only five or six points between where they are in first place. That you know, depending on how things shake out, you can make that up in you know two, three, four weeks. Now we're not only ten points off first place, we're seven points off a home playoff spot. That gap keeps growing and growing and growing. And and as we know from last year, the larger that gap grows, the harder it's going to be. And I just, I don't, it's the difference between this year and last year. The positive side is, well, we have more points than we did through this amount of games last year. The, the negative side is we also knew last year that we were still pretty injured and that we had some key contributors who were just starting to come back at this point last year. And, and that could make a difference. That's not really the case right now. Like there were some injuries against RSL, but this team kind of is what it is at this point. And it doesn't feel like, even though Peter says he thinks they're getting better, like the same mistakes keep happening. And I don't see that changing anytime soon for this team. And that's right. Ah, man, my optimism is very low after this performance. Um, it's just, there is, there's some bright spots, right? I'm going to say Memo Rodriguez, bright spot. Uh, mm-hmm. Daniel shallow has been quiet over there, man. Uh, Alan Polito ha- has some flashes, but I miss Rosero. Volader, Volader just made me sick with rage. I, I, every, every pass he had, every clearance, I was like, this man, I don't like to come on my podcast and like flat out bash a player, but I'm just like, we all, we all agree. Like he's not the starter, right? Like he that's almost- not it. He almost scored an own goal and then almost made John Polskamp break his shin on the the the, the post trying to defend what? the own goal. What kind of back pass was that, bro? John Polskamp's like, oh. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was going in the net and he had to get back there, dude. It was bad. It's 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 just it you know it is disheartening because there are a couple young players where you're like, okay, Jake Davis, bright spot, just signed a a, a contract to stay with the club long term. Great, Jake Love had that. moments, dude. Jake had moments. Jake's a, Jake's a wonderful young player. Um, Alenis has got to get better. He's he's fast. Um, I think there's potential there, but he's got to get more skill underneath him. Good to uh, see Johnny back in there. Johnny was back in there, you know, trying to get fully fit. Um, Pulse Camp is still a bright spot for this team. I don't know how much longer Melia will or won't be around, but Pulse Camp continues to be a bright spot for me whenever he gets in to the game. Then I look Fontas. Why does Fontas run like he has a tractor trailer attached to him? He's getting burned. He dude, Jake Davis had to like truck it from midfield to yeah. help him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I had a, a, a first hand view of of Julio or Chicho or or Gomez, whoever it was, just Fontas would have like a three, four yard lead and they would just fly by him like he was running in slow motion. And it's just, yeah, not- we saw your, 
we saw your facial reaction to it. It's that yeah, you're yeah. not happy. <laughs> I what do you remember what had just happened when they showed when that popped no, up on the screen? I was more it was more or less like my friend's on the news. I gotta you know take a picture. <laughs> it's hilarious. like did you watch did you watch back wrestling from from when we went to Raw and, uh-huh. and try to see yeah. yourself? Oh yeah. I mean, there was no way to see us. That's for sure. Well, there was one. There was one shot when when Becky was talking. They kind of shot. Uh, we were we were out of focus, but yeah, they shot from where we would be. And uh, Cody, my my boss, who was there with us, he was one of long. Nice stuff. guy, by the way. Nice guy. He, yeah, he finally got to meet you. Um, there was a, a point where I just see him stand up and start waving his arms because he he knew we were on camera. We were nice out of focus, but I was like, hey, that's where we are. Um. <laughs> So I don't know. It's uh, I just feel a little disheartened after this game. Um, I like I said, I just you know I don't really know where this team can go from here, other than the potential to sign a player in the summer. Where you know somebody like Taylor Twelman is saying, "Stay tuned." You know, maybe something's coming for Sporty Kansas City. And there were people over this past week who you know, there's no real connection, but. Marco Royce, the, the the famous German attacker who's played for Borussia Dortmund, he, he announced he's not returning to Dortmund after um, his contract's up in June, and so people like he'd be a good addition to Sporting, although he would not bring the age down. That would be a you know a, a, a aging star signing. Um, but at this point, people are just looking for anything to get excited about, and and as things stand right now, there's just not a lot for for this fan base to get super excited about because it feels like we know who this team is yeah true so, it's just uh it is rather unfortunate um one note that i saw that i obviously didn't hear because I, I wasn't there but apparently on the broadcast uh max bredos one of the apple announcers said that peter Ramiz got a call from pro about his ipad situation did you hear this i did yeah so i guess had like a the- conversation or whatever and it's you probably got fined right I haven't seen anything about a fine publicly, at least. I mean, do they announce that if it's the coach? I, I usually we find out. Really, uh, the disciplinary committee emailed out their decisions last week, and I looked, and there wasn't anything on there. It was all player stuff. Um, but apparently, Peter Vermees called it a quote very productive conversation. So, whatever that means, we'll take it for what it is. I know other teams have been using it as a meme. Minnesota United put it out there as a meme, and and Peter Vermees is a very memeable guy. So. Can't say I'm surprised, but uh, I don't know. It's just after the game, I mean, there wasn't much for Peter to say, but he said, you know, the difference was the set piece, um, and uh, that that was that was really it. Um, yeah, he said. I think the game was fairly even. There wasn't any crazy stuff. We had a couple of counterattacks here and there. They had a couple of chances. Uh, there wasn't a ton in that regard. We played a good game. But the game is not just defending through the run of play. It's also set pieces. We shouldn't have given up the set piece where we did. There was no reason to. But then also defending it. I say this all the time. You've got to be able to defend, whether it's through run of play or set pieces. We obviously didn't do that on the set piece. So Same old story, man. That's the frustrating part. And I think that's the part where, like, Peter said he wasn't worried about it after... The last home game, when he was asked, like, oh, this has happened quite a few times, like, what's going on? He's like, well, we're getting better. I'm not worried about it. You guys keep wanting to talk about it, but I'm not worried about it. And then here it is. When do we worry? Again. And again. When do we get to again. worry? Right. So I'm worried about it right now. I'm not sitting here being like, oh, it's fine, because it's objectively not getting better. It keeps happening. Yeah. Uh, but, hey, it is what it is. Now we turn our attention to, uh, to Union Omaha up in uh, Nebraska, and... I mean, it sounds like you think, and, and probably rightly so, that our only shot at hardware this year is making an Open Cup run. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you really got to turn something around, man. The shape of this team, the, the culture, the everything, like the positive attitudes have got to be going down. Uh-huh. Um, it's just you're about to, you know, you're about to get midway through May and, and be hurting a little bit. But it's one point per game ain't enough to get it done. Oh, so. No. Start turning around now. I mean, maybe an Open Cup win gives you some huge momentum coming into a home game against Houston on Saturday. Um, can't blame you there. I mean, let, let's let's see what happens. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Houston they're they're an okay team. Um, you know, they they drew St. Louis um, nil nil um, in Houston on Saturday. So um, 
you know, they had 23 shots, nine on goal. If you look at the stats for the game, um, they, they put 1.6 XG up to St. Louis's 1.8 XG. So both teams probably got a little unlucky that they, they didn't get a goal, but you know, I feel relatively confident against Union Omaha, even though it's on the road. Like we should win that game. I'm not going to spend too much time or or energy stressing about that. And and we lose it. It's embarrassing. And then we crash out of the Open Cup. And then okay, that's that. The Houston game has me a little worried. I yeah. I mean, I know it's at home, but I'm not seeing anything from this sporting team that's given me any logical reason to be confident with Houston coming into Children's Mercy Park on Saturday. No, no, don't be confident. Don't be confident at all. I mean, a midweek, midweek win will help, you know, get that, get that fire coming, but it's, it's, you can't be confident, man. You have no idea what's going to happen. The way yeah. things have been going, there is no confidence. Yeah. I'm telling I'm, you, if you got Daniel Shallowy going and just popping and popping, like, come on, I think he's a big part of this right now. And he's just, he's very quiet right now. He he's been very quiet. Alan Polito has has been very. He just doesn't seem like. I mean, last year he he would disappear at times, but you know he was what fourteen, fifteen goals that he scored. Like that was it was clearly a guy who had some quality. And and this year, I don't really know what's going on. He's just he doesn't seem involved. He seems like he's there for one or two plays a game where he's got a chance, but outside of that, he just kind of disappears for for long periods of time. Um, and, and, and I don't love that. And, and yeah, I'm almost at the point where I'd rather see Willie start up top and have Allen come off the bench just to try something different. Hey, look, I was excited to see a come in last night. I was like, let's see that spark. And there was no spark. There was no spark. I was like, did a ever touch the ball? I, I don't even remember him touching the ball. A couple of times, maybe. Yeah. Well, it, it, it maybe I was wasn't. just tuned out. I was just getting bored and, and out of it, dude. I was done. Just you know, zero point three two or whatever XG is is not acceptable. It's not great, not for that front line. Um, and Isn't I know it like that, a shot on goal for both teams in the first half. They each had yeah. like one shot on goal. Yeah, it, I mean it was it was very minimal. Um, so I don't know. I don't feel great. Um, I'm hoping that we get the win against Union Omaha and that we can somehow get a win against the Houston Dynamo. I mean. This is we're no longer at the point where you can drop points at home. Like dropping yeah. points at home is is never something that you can do if you want to challenge for for not just winning the league, but for um, you know, hosting a playoff spot. But um it was Nolan King on Twitter who said rotating the players and dropping points on the road isn't as big of a deal if we haven't also been dropping points at home from winning positions like crazy. I could forgive a game like this on the road against the first place team in the Western Conference if we haven't dropped 12 or more points at home from winning positions over the first 10 games. That's wild. The statistics are wild. It's just, it's too much. So, we'll, we'll see. I mean, Houston's a, a, a very solid team. I am worried about what Hector Herrera will be able to do in the midfield. We don't have a Roger Espinosa to equalize a player like that anymore. Um, you know, Voltaire, if he's on his game, he can run with Herrera, but uh, we don't know what sort of condition he'll be in. We don't know if Radia will be back. And, um, you know, at this point, Tommy is the only one who's really able to create anything in the attack. So I think that'll be the key is, is can the midfield step up and, and control the midfield or, or will they let Hector Herrera run roughshod over us? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I'm not even convinced we, we win the Open Cup game, so we'll, we'll see. The vibes are great. The vibes are good. Yeah. No. Every, that, <laughs> it sounds like you heard your sound like that dog meme where the whole house is on fire and you're like, everything's fine. It's fine. Just sipping your coffee. Everything's fine. <laughs> um, outside of, of the Sporting KC game and then obviously the, the Miami game where they actually went down 1-0 and then came back and went crazy um what was the biggest takeaway from from the league for you i mean it, it has to be columbus right oh yeah man you're uh champions cup finalists going mm-hmm. to the ship that's pretty uh it's pretty cool is that a, that's a two-leg situation right i believe so they've changed it like every year for the past five years straight but i'm, I'm pretty See, sure you know how hard it is to keep 
keep up with rules when they keep changing stuff and like playoff formats and MLS. It, it's weird, man. It's it hard. is frustrating. I mean, we're we're both two people that are pretty plugged in to try to be MLS and 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 the weird rules and everything. And I remember even at one point last year, someone asked me just to, the the playoff struct, the basic MLS regular season, you know, MLS Cup playoff structure, and I was like shoot okay when okay it starts as right. a one-off game and then it goes to a best of three for it but then it goes back to a, a, a one-off game and i'm just like i don't this is too much you got a wikipedia that shit you got to go find it somewhere like a like a posting from last year about the update right but columbus went down to monterey and not only held on to you know the 2-1 win or lead that they had going into the game they added to it and won 3-1 in monterey which is super impressive it's pretty wild man i had that game on uh towards the end of the game and then Columbus put one more up and I was like all right I feel confident going to bed now with their right. 3-1 lead <laughs> well they'll take on Pachuca in the finals coming up here in, in a while I think I feel what? okay with that when they got past Monterey I'm like I feel okay with Pachuca then if they mm-hmm. keep this up if they play like they did against Monterey Columbus is going to win the CONCACAF Champions Cup pretty dope so they're they're they have a, a, a real good thing going at that organization right now so um when they almost incredible. lost their team. Almost lost the team to go to Austin. And look what Austin's doing now. Yeah. Anthony Precourt. Uh, having a blast. Having a blast. Having a blast. But, hey, you know, I'll be pulling for Columbus for, for MLS to, to beat Pachuca in, in, in CONCACAF Champions Cup. Um, but other than that, I mean, I guess San Jose beat LAFC. That was that was a little bit of a, a strange one. Three to one. It's a little unexpected. And... uh Nashville laid the smackdown on Montreal four to one. Yeah. So um I, I believe Haney Mukhtar coming off the field was the first time that they enforced the time substitution rule. He took more than ten seconds toward the end of the game. So um uh well, Sadich, cool. Sadich, I believe is how you say his name, who was the the player coming in for Mukhtar, had to stand out for a minute um before he could come in. So uh, they are enforcing the new rules, which is also something that the Real Salt Lake fans did not understand because at they one point when Shallowy was chopped down, I heard the guy behind me literally start counting. He goes, one, two, three, and he counts to ten. He goes, he's down too long. Like, he's got to go off for a minute now. And I'm like, no, that's what not is how, wrestling? Right. That's not how this, <laughs> like, if they came on and they were giving him treatment on the field, yes, but the ref, one, hasn't even blown. The the, the game is still going. Oh, they have no whistle. And then the ref gave him a check on him, probably told Daniel, you either got to get up or you're going to have to get off. And and then Daniel got up and they went on. Like, this is not... You guys, when you think you got it bad, you could be an RSL fan. Just remember that. You could be. You could, you could be, <laughs> you know, celebrating your win at the Joe's Crab Shack near the Mega Plus in Sandy, Utah. If you're having a bad day, just remember Jimmy's travels. <laughs> please, please do. I mean, hey... One thing I will give them is is the train to get to and from the downtown area to Sandy, Utah. Very convenient. Very much appreciate that. Public transit for the win. The rest of the rest of the experience, zero stars do not recommend. Free situation, the train free? Uh there is a free zone. And then if you get outside of that zone, it starts charging. But the most you'll ever have to pay is five dollars for a day. You buy a day pass. Cool. So you can get all the way from the University of Utah campus to south of Sandy, Utah. So nice, not a bad deal. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else that's that stuck out to you this week that you you want to make mention of before we uh, we throw this one in the garbage bin and never look back at it? I don't, man. I hope this is a really good week of soccer. I hope we can bounce back with two really important games and uh, you know get get on the right track because it just it just starts with one. It just starts with one win, and you just got to go from there. They they talk about it all the time. The next game is the most important game. Okay, right. make us feel it. Make us feel. I mean, we've gone on runs where we've gone, you know, unbeaten in a, a month or two span before, or or you know, three, four, five game win streak. So, sure. The good news about oh, soccer right. is you can stack points quickly, but you got to do it. And and that's where my concern is: is I just don't feel like they've shown that they will do it. But every I mean, year, possible. every year, Peter says. After 10 games, we know who we are. We're at game 11. I kind of say, let's wait till June. You know, let's wait till the end of May. <laughs> no, I do, because there's a lot of soccer left at the, at the end of May. Yeah. You can really go on a run. Past Seattle Sounders teams have been unbeatable in those runs. They've shown it can happen. So let's just, let's stay True. calm for right now. Let's be sad and lament a little bit. 
So let's yeah. bounce back and get it going. The difference is the the year that the Sounders went from being like second or third to last to winning MLS Cup is the year they signed Nicolas Ladero in the summer. And I, you know, if we can we sign got- a future club legend this summer, then by all means, I'm all for it. But we'll see. We got someone coming. Well, according to Taylor Twelman. We'll so, see. Taylor Twelman sucks. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Well, on that note, I uh, I think that's all we got for you this week. Um, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for that five-star rating and review. If you have not done a five-star rating and review, please go ahead and do so. We'll read it here on air. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at NoOtherPod, at DanCoozer, at JCMac03. You can shoot us an email, NoOtherPod at gmail.com. Check us out on YouTube, KCSN Soccer. Uh, you're going to get you know exclusive video content that you won't see otherwise, like a picture of me looking pissed off at the fans. There it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Meme that shit. That's good. <laughs> so make sure you check us out on KCSN Soccer on YouTube or the Kansas City Sports Network app. But until next time, he's Dan. I'm Jimmy. We'll catch y'all later. See ya. You could be an RSL fan. Ugh.